Hello, everyone. I'm going to present to you uh, implementation of home-based insulin management without refrigeration in the Gahli refugee camp in Kenya. This is a follow-up uh, implementation of uh, insulin stability study, which was uh, done sometimes in 2014 with the field uh, ambient temperature. So we had to do the actual implementation of the of the program. So a bit background of the Dagahli camp. Uh, Dagahli camp is one of the five camps in the Dab refugee complex, the world's largest refugee camp. Uh, it's situated in northern Kenya, and it has been in existence since 1991 after the civil war in Somalia. The camp uh, is a home to over 69,000 refugees, majority of being Somali origin. MSF Swiss started its operation in March 2009 with primary health care. And in the month of uh, August, the same year, added the secondary health care with a 100-bed capacity hospital with 24-hour operational theater and emergency room. As of the uh, end of 2016, we had uh, 810 NCD patients on follow-up, which comprises about 1.2% uh, of the camp population. NCD clinics are uh, integrated in primary health care, while the insulin-dependent uh, diabetic patients come to the hospital emergency room for daily injection of their insulin in the morning and in the evening, which was uh, quite hectic for them. Uh, the camp has a high insecurity which makes even uh, accessibility more difficult. And uh, MSF is the only medical organization in the camp. So why did we do the, where did we implement this program? Due to the increasing number of patients requiring insulin, the distance and uh, insecurity in the camp hindered uh, this patient to come for the insulin dose, especially in the evening which led to uncontrolled hypo, uh, hypoglycemia and uh, frequent admission to the hospital. So the aim of the study was to assess feasibility of home-based insulin management in a complex humanitarian settings without refrigeration and uh, to improve access to uh, insulin and adherence to insulin to prevent acute complications and also decongest the emergency room because patients have to come every day in the morning and the evening for insulin injection and also to reduce uh, hospital admission and overall to improve patient outcome. So we did a descriptive study where we retrospectively analyzed the routine program data. So after we have faced this problem in the field, uh, we requested the uh, OCG medical team to look into best ways we can deliver insulin to these patients. And uh, in 2014, study to test insulin stability in uh, Field temperatures were done with collaboration of uh, University of Geneva. Then uh, the results showed that uh, various uh, insulin were, were, which were tested uh, at, the, at field temperatures remained uh, stable after a period of time with uh, temperatures in the field. So these findings informed the uh, implementation of home-based uh, insulin management. After that, we had to sensitize the community, uh, inform them that uh, now you can be given insulin and uh, manage yourself at home without refrigeration. Then we conducted, uh, we developed SOPs on implementation of, uh, of this program. So eligibility criteria for joining home insulin management was all diabetic patients who are using insulin are eligible as long as they were willing to inject insulin themselves, check their blood sugar, 
and uh, willing to be admitted for insulin optimization and education and come for follow-up, be able to read and write the numbers or the caretaker can do, can do so, and possess sufficient uh, manual dexterity since uh, motor skills was required for injection and sugar testing. So patients who met this criteria were admitted into the hospital in a small group of four to five for five days for initial medical uh, assessment and education, which included uh, blood sugar monitoring, insulin dose adjustment, uh, baseline investigation, and uh, education on the insulin, uh, what's insulin, how to store, what's diabetes and uh, complication of diabetes. So, and after completing five days of hospitalization, before we discharge patient, we did a competency checklist to be sure that the patient understood everything we taught them. And then uh, some of the parameters we checked was if patient could recognize signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia, and if they know how to react, what to do if they feel those symptoms, if they can, be, can store insulin well, they can have the technique of injecting insulin, dose withdrawal, and uh, sick day rules. So the ones who completed this uh, satisfied the checklist were given a discharge kit, which uh, included uh, a container for storage of insulin and injection and monitoring equipment, so like uh, glucometers and uh, sugar strips. And then patients were happy to go home and uh, self-manage themselves in the blocks. So this is a locally made uh, charcoal cooler. It's used for storage of uh, insulin. Uh, they wet it twice in a day. Uh, it has some charcoal inside uh, with, uh, which is when it's wet with the uh, aeration, it releases some uh, vapor. So it cools the insulin to uh, temperatures which is good for the insulin storage. So this is locally made in the camp. So results, yeah, all 24 patients who are eligible for uh, the study were enrolled and successfully completed the induction course, the five days uh, training, and the age uh, range between one year and 65 with a mean of 20. And uh, nearly half of the cohort were below 18 years and 41.7% uh, of them being female. So during the year, we had uh, eight new admissions who joined the program and six exit, five uh, relocation, and uh, one death of unrelated uh, course. 83.3% of the cohort were type one patients. And 25% uh, of the cohort had comorbidity of either hypertension uh, and organ damage, and time since diagnosis range between one month and 12 years. So patient outcome, HbO1c is a test to measure patient uh, diabetic control. The lower the readings, the better the results. So this test was done at enrollment and every three months. Uh, the HbO1c at enrollment range between seven to 14. So the target we, we set for the patient was anything below 8.5. It's a good target for our setup. So at enrollment, we had 7.0 to 14 with a mean of 10.4. And at 12 months, uh, 18 patients for whom we had data the HP1C still range between 7 to 14 with a mean of uh, 10.2. But this uh, an overall improvement of 44.4% of the initial cohort uh, had improved their HB1C 
as compared to the first one at enrollment. So this is our HbA1c analyzer. Uh, it's available at our point of care. It can also do microalbinuria. So in terms of ER and hospital admission decongestion, uh, diabetic-related hospital admission dropped from 93 in the month of June to November 2015 to 15 in November, in June to November 2016. That's after we enrolled the program, which translated to about 83.7 reduction in hospital admission. And same for the ER consultation, it has dropped from 543 in the month of June to November 2015 to 109 in the month of July to November 2016 with 70.9, 29.7 reduction in ER consultation, which really decongested the emergency room. So after storage and usage period of uh, insulin, patient returned uh, the residual insulin to the clinic. We sent for potency analysis to University of Geneva. We sent 32 samples which were analyzed and the time period of uh, this insulin staying in the patient's home range between 12 and 31 days. So all samples tested were within the target plus or minus 100%, which confirmed to the pharmacopoeia of the drug. So we also did a temperature monitoring of the, the cooler, cooler charcoal periodically, just to make sure that uh, we don't expose insulin to higher temperatures. And we did during the hottest period of the year and the coolest period of the year. And temperatures varied between 23.5 to 37 which was uh, within the acceptable range of insulin stability. So challenges we faced was uh, food insecurity in the camp, uh, which made patient management uh, particularly challenging with reduction of general food distribution to about 50% in 2016. And some partner agencies like WFP, they are not sensitive to this class of refugees or beneficiaries, especially with uh, diabetic-friendly food, poor social economic status, and uh, high literacy level among the patient and caretaker made difficult to adjust insulin doses and uh, change uh, regimen. So to wrap up, uh, home insulin management is accepted uh, by all patients since it allowed them to return to their normal activities. School going children had the chance to go back to school. And uh, home insulin management is, appears feasible in a complex humanitarian setting without refrigeration. And it really improved patient care. 44% of the patient improved their HbA1c. We had no uh, admission due to acute complication of diabetes. And this model can be implemented in MS in other MSF and non-MSF settings. In fact, it's now been uh, used in uh, South Sudan. And finally, to thank uh, MSF CH field staff, coordination, OCG medical department and innovation dep unit, and uh, University of Geneva for doing analysis of our insulin potency. Thank, Thank you. you very much.